Tan Tatlin from the University Think Tank Million Plus. Um, one point, I do agree to some extent that the government should not be trying to seek uh, to pick winners. The government really didn't predict digital Britain. Uh, it was developed by entrepreneurs, people in the newer universities and so on. And we've got real reservations about the new industries, new jobs agenda, because it partly doesn't deal with demand. Question. Universities are part of this triangulation. Uh, we've been, it had four sectors of states. More importantly, we've had three departments in the last four years. The advantage of the present setup is universities are in biz and research funding and teaching funding, the whole gamut of universities' activities are in one department, whereas previously, under the old DTI, research funding was separated out. Will the Conservatives think very carefully about keeping that together, and will you outbid and outmaneuver Michael Gove in terms of where universities sit <laughs> in the future <laughs> Conservatives? <laughs> It's uh, a quite important point. We are considering very carefully. It's, it's, it's for uh, David, obviously, to decide eventually. Uh, and we, we haven't decided. At the moment, David Williams is still shadowing Dias, which came between the Federal of Education and his present home in Biz. I expected the vice chancellors in the academic world would react violently to going into DTI, which is what it's got into now. Particularly, it's obviously part of putting a personal empire together rather than a policy uh, empire. But actually, vice chancellors seem remarkably relaxed about it all. And I'm not uh, probably evoking lots of vice chancellors to start complaining. Uh, but we're, we're looking at it carefully. We have two competing things. One is that the logical distribution of responsibilities so that things do hang together properly. Uh, and then on the other hand, the pointlessness of these constant reorganizations anyway. My experience is whenever you reorganise departments, it means six months that department can do nothing. Because all the, the entire time is taken up with everybody arguing about what grade they're going to be in the structure and who's responsible and all this bit. And you, when it's all over, your marvellously logical new construction doesn't seem very much better than where you were before. So, inertia on the one hand, uh, Cameron needs to take a, a, an overall look to what structure they've got and he needs. On the other, and uh, we're open to arguments, and you obviously quite like uh, the new setup that we we'll have to resolve when we get into office. In my opinion, once you've resolved it, uh, rapid reshuffles are a total waste of time. It just means you have a stream of ministers, none of whom ever gets into the job. I don't think Blair all around ever understood what the junior ministers are for. And some of the cabinet reshuffles, it's all, it's all personality politics that determines a stream of people. To very important jobs, but actually they've got a responsible task that they should be dis discharging. Uh, and constantly reorganizing Whitehall and giving them stupid new names uh, is a quite pointless gesture of politics. Um, one last very good question from the gesture of the future. <coughs> Keith Willey from London Business School, uh, though this isn't a question about universities. Uh, <coughs> I mean, I hear from other people that the country's best and we're having to have a radical rethink of our foreign policy, particularly our um, intervention. Uh, I, I mean, it doesn't take many steps to go from those two thoughts to our defence industry. And the defence industry, it seems to me, has a huge impact on the manufacturing sector in this country. Not just our, our spending on our own forces, but through our foreign policy, it's selling arms to other people. Uh, you know, the, the radical thought is, well, if there ain't no money and we're going to pull in our homes overseas, then the defence sector is going to be massively hit. And, and with that, it, it hits not just those companies directly involved, but all the spillover uh, companies that grow up around the defence sector. What, what are your thoughts about um, the defence industry? Well, I think you're right. I mean, BAE is, I think, the biggest manufacturing company in this country. Uh, and the defence industry is probably the biggest single block uh, as a part of the uh, manufacturing base we're all talking about. Uh, I don't shy away from that. I think this is the way we've got to take it seriously. The defense industry is a, a source of our manufacturing strength, employment, and everything else. Uh, it is the exporting industry, very important exporting industry. Uh, and done responsibly, uh, I think the uh, government has to, you know, be supportive of the British defense industry here abroad. <coughs> um, we, 
obviously have to sort out the scandal of procurement. We seem incapable of buying the right equipment or buying it in a cost effective and timely way. We always have been. Far from getting better, it just seems to get worse. Um, actual procurement by domestically, where we're a small part of the total market for the British defence industry, uh, military and foreign policy priorities must predominate. The history of defence procurement is that uh, politics, uh, manufacturers lobbying, uh, you know, play at least as important part as any military requirement, and the history is littered with great schemes which um, were designed to provide work for this facility or that facility which can't be cancelled because of the consequences of, and so on. Uh, I think we do have to move away from that. It wastes taxpayers' money, it doesn't uh, give us the fighting power we necessarily have the right kind of always that we require in the kind of warfare we're engaged in, and it's not the best way of supporting the real <coughs> defence industry, but to competitive. Everything we said about it, it's no good. What we, I've probably distinguished between me and uh, someone who's more to the left of me. That, that's like, that the people on the left have a dilemma to solve themselves. They tend to talk movingly about the manufacturing base, something quite far to the left would agree with me, I'd say, about the need for a manufacturing base, but then actually somehow wish to abandon uh, the largest single part of the manufacturing industry in this country, which is the defense industry. Well, thank you, Karen. I'm sorry, I know there are still some unasked questions out there, and um, hopefully the proceedings in the rest of the day will be feeding into not just your team, but uh, other policy makers across the political spectrum. Um, we now must um, depart for our few great sessions, and you must be able to pass I think, in about five minutes time. Thank you for your generous words this morning, and I owe you a very